Welcome to your real estate market update for February 2023. In this month's update, I'm going to focus in on three different things for you. Number one, we're going to talk about mortgage rates as the changes in mortgage rates directly impact buyer demand. Number two, we're going to talk about inventory because the overall supply of homes available are what directly impacts prices. And number three, we're going to take a look at some misleading headlines. Now, while the headlines may be factually correct, they aren't exactly telling the whole story. So stick around to the end for that. And we're going to jump into this right now. Hi, this is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team of EXP Realty here in Frisco, Texas. And you know, over the past couple of weeks, as I've met with several different buyers and sellers, the one thing that I've noticed consistently overall is confusion. There seems to be some confusion out there because the perception is not necessarily tying into the reality of what we're seeing here in the marketplace. And as always, real estate is local. And so what you're going to find is some of the things that may be reported and might be happening across the country are not necessarily tying into the conditions that we're seeing here in Frisco. So as promised, we're going to start with mortgage rates. So I'm going to share my screen. I've got a few slides for you here to kind of show exactly what's been happening lately. So let's take a look at what's happening with mortgage rates first. So as shown on this chart right here, mortgage rates have generally been trending down, which has helped encourage buyers to start coming back into the market. The fear was is that buyer demand would basically disappear. And to a certain extent, that did happen over the summer and into the early fall as rates were continuing to go up. But now that rates have been trending down week to week, they may bounce up and down. But the overall trend is that rates are going down. So what does that exactly mean for the overall market? As buyers seem to be adjusting to the new reality of where interest rates are, mortgage rates are currently. Well, as a matter of fact, a recent study that was done by Mortgage Daily News, they came up with this <clears throat> to show what we're seeing overall with regards to buyer demand as it relates to mortgage rates. And for us here, we're sitting in the area of good buyer demand. Rates have generally been between six and six and a half percent. I can tell you here in Frisco, we are seeing really good buyer demand. As a matter of fact, the new home buildings, uh, the new home sales offices are busy. I was out looking at some models with people yesterday and there was no shortage of people. It was never quiet at any time. There was a continual amount of traffic through. And if mortgage rates continue to trend down as they're expected to, and they get under six back into the high fives, we're expecting that buyer demand is going to strengthen even further. Now, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association, mortgage applications last week jumped up 7.4%, which was one of the largest weekly increases that they have seen. As a matter of fact, they said, purchase activity that was put on hold last year is gradually coming back as rates ease and demand for housing remains strong. Now, that's not the narrative that we're necessarily seeing because as you've probably noticed yourself, talk of a housing market crash has been on the increase. The bubble is bursting. The market is crashing. That's kind of been the narrative since rates went up. And I can understand it. Let's face it. The expectation was that supply would keep going as we look at inventory. So this is 2022. So this shows where we were last year and it showed the amount of homes for sale. So the listings were increasing rapidly. Now, again, the inventory, the supply of homes for sale directly impacts pricing, supply, demand. Now, I just mentioned, as those mortgage rates were skyrocketing, the assumption that was made and the reason many large banks were forecasting large price declines, the reason all of the crash talk came back is the expectation was this, was that supply would continue to increase going forward in the face of declining demand. But that's not actually what happened. What actually happened was this. So we got to a part in about June 
an inventory absolutely began to plummet. It went down and it dropped way below any year that we've seen going back for the past five years, which has made many of the the big banks to start to revise their forecasts. The, the crash is going to need really low demand with really high supply, and that's going to cause prices to come plummeting down. And that just hasn't happened. So there's two main reasons for this. For sellers last year, for homeowners, when they realized they weren't going to get the price they wanted for their home, they simply took it off the market. They didn't have to sell. If someone was just wanting to sell and not actually needing to sell, why trade your 3% mortgage in for a mortgage rate of six and a half? They just simply weren't going to do it. So as a result, people that had their homes listed simply withdrew them, let them expire or took them off the market. And the sellers that had been thinking about selling just flat out didn't sell. There's no reason to. So as a result, inventory started falling and that has helped keep pricing up much higher than people had originally expected it to be. Now, as we switch gears here for just a second, this is taking a look specifically at Frisco. So now I'm looking at the Frisco market. And again, this is inventory. So the darker blue line here, the solid line is showing the 90 day trend while the seven day trend is showing on this dash line. And you can see since inventory peaked back here in August, it's just been continually going down and down and down. So while you're seeing reports that inventory is up, yes, inventory is up a little bit compared to January of 2022. But we're not way up compared to pre-pandemic. And that's part of what is leading to some of that confusion. Now, with these mixed signals out there in the marketplace, it's no wonder that the perception of what's going on against the reality is not quite lining up. As you've just seen, buyer demand is, is staying fairly strong and inventory continues to go down. Normally, this time of year, we will start to see signs of an uptick as we head towards the busier spring season. And we aren't seeing that yet. The numbers week over week continue to fall. So it's no surprise then, especially when you look at what the actual numbers are telling us and you compare that to what some of those headlines out there are, that most people are under the impression that the housing market is currently in a much worse state than it actually is. It's rather interesting. In fact, a recent survey was done by NerdWallet that actually asked people what they think the likelihood of a housing market crash was. And here's what came back. So 67% of Americans say a housing market crash is imminent in the next three years. And I can understand that. As I mentioned right at the beginning, the headlines are quite misleading as we look at what's out there. So one of the ideas surrounding a crash has to do with foreclosures. So I wanna show you just a few of the headlines surrounding that topic that I have seen just recently. So US foreclosure filings surged 115% in 2022. US foreclosure activity doubles annually, but still below pre-pandemic levels. Foreclosure filings rose 115% in the past year. So you can see they're saying similar things. And again, factually, they are correct, but they're not telling the whole story. Yes, foreclosure filings are up, but they're up compared to a year in which a moratorium was in place and foreclosures couldn't happen. So all of this talk and all of these headlines fueling that, oh my gosh, this is happening and that's happening and the economy is about to tank and this and that is what is leading people to believe a crash is imminent. Now, again, will the market turn eventually? Sure it will. But as of right now, again, the data doesn't suggest that that is going to happen. And it's important to point out that foreclosures are a part of every single real estate market, good and bad. But for many of them to say that we're going to repeat what we saw back with the housing crash of 2008, it's just not the case. And if we look specifically here at foreclosures, take a look at this. So last year, they did go up. As you can see, here's 2021, and there were 151,000 foreclosure filings in 2021. And they jumped 115%. They went to 324,000 in 2022. But if you compare that 
going all the way back to 2005, it's the lowest number of foreclosure filings in a year that we have seen. And nowhere near what we saw during the height of the housing market crash in 2008, 9, and 10, when almost 3 million foreclosure filings in a year took place. I can tell you here right now, as of me recording this, there are zero distressed property listings in Frisco. There are four in all of Collin County, and there are three in all of Denton County. So they are not a significant part of our market. And yes, the economy could turn. Yes, things could get worse. Yes, we could go into a recession. But considering home prices right now are holding steady, they've been treading water here since the end of August. Here in Frisco, they, they're bouncing up and down from week to week, but they're basically holding steady. With that in mind, when you look at the equity gains that have been made over the past couple of years, if someone did lose a job and someone was truly in a need to sell financially, chances are they could sell the home traditionally, pull the equity out and, and move into a rental property. They still have plenty of equity in that home. And in closing today, here's what Rick Sharga, he is the executive vice president of market intelligence at Adam Data. And Adam is one of the most widely respected sources of foreclosure data and real estate data in general. And as he said, 18 months after the end of the government's foreclosure moratorium, and with less than 5% of the 8.4 million borrowers who entered the CARES Act forbearance program remaining, foreclosure activity remains significantly lower than it was prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. So it seems clear that what the government did back when they introduced that to prevent foreclosures absolutely worked. And it's kept, you know, hundreds of thousands of homes out of foreclosure, which was desired. So with that in mind, as you can see, where's this new inventory going to come from? Where is the great increase in supply going to come from in order for there to be this imbalance to cause prices to come crashing down? The thing is, I don't know, because by many estimates, we are still between three and five and a half million homes underbuilt in this country currently. So again, hopefully you found this information useful and provides a little bit of perspective on what we're seeing here in the local market. But again, each and every market is different. If you wanna keep up to date on what's going on in your local market, in the description below, I've got a link to my weekly market report. The chart I showed you showing inventory levels was based on my Frisco report. From that report, you can search any city or zip code in the entire country, whichever area is of interest to you, and keep track of price points, inventory levels, in your local market. As always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can send me an email at andrew at the andrew smith team .com, or feel free to give me a call at 469-296-5230.